Here is a, a video on how to do rendering using SOLIDWORKS. Um, SOLIDWORKS used to have many different renders, uh, but now only has one, and it's a good thing. It's called PhotoView 360. It's uh, this little window here. And uh, PhotoView, PhotoView 360 is actually Modo. Uh, it's a light version of Modo mostly for rendering. So what is Modo? Um, uh, this is Modo. It's a 3D um, uh, software to create 3D asset, 3D content. And it's used a lot with uh, in design, mostly in the shoe industry. But it's also, as you can tell, it's also used uh, a lot with SOLIDWORKS and Rhino. So it's a standalone uh, where you it's a bit like 3ds Max or Cinema 40 or Blender. But um, we, like if I had to do complex visualization, I would use a model and it can import SOLIDWORKS or Rhino file. But if it's just some stills, uh, you could just use it within uh, SOLIDWORKS like this and you'll get very good render. But at the end of the day, it's the same thing. Uh, so I'm showing it to you now because you'll see uh, in a few seconds that it looks the same in uh, SOLIDWORKS. So this is some images created in Modo. Uh, you could create the exact same thing in SOLIDWORKS. Where Modo come very useful, it's when you have organic modeling, things moving. Uh, this is where New Balance, um, Keen Shoes, uh, um, Nike use Modo and even Adidas in the UK so people like Bo Bose use Modo, Oakley uh, so it's gonna be very for beginner I'm not gonna go super deep but I'll show you where things are so this is SOLIDWORKS as you can tell I have uh, an ROV a remote operated vehicle so like a mini uh, submarine robot that can go on its own and um, I'll show you how to uh, texture it, create the light, and the actual render. Um, photo view. Often it's not installed. So if photo view it's not installed, you have to go tools, and you have to go add-ins. You only do this once, and then you make sure that photo view is checked here and checked here. Then every time you'll start uh, SolidWorks, if you right click here, you'll get a render tool. And your render tool is here. It's the same thing as this one. Exact same thing. The only difference is the size of the icon. So I'll be using that one. Uh, another place where you find photo view is here. Uh, this is more if you want to tweak a material, uh, get rid of one. So you could go right click, edit appearance, material, exact same thing. And you see we can remove it. And another place where we see photo view is here. Actually, most of the thing will do it here. And there's three big section. There's the uh, materials. It's the same as Modo. So we could uh, even use some newer Modo one. Uh, they would work. Uh, and here we could drag and drop. Scenes is our lighting. It's not just the background, it's our environment lighting. We call that also IBL or HDR, High Dynamic Range or Image-Based Lighting. So most of the time we use this one, sometimes this one. Like uh, for industrial designer, I found like uh, all of those years, my student, including myself or colleague, it's often those two. But there's more. We could do a, a kitchen one. And here we have decals that are just stickers jpeg png you could also create your own okay so let's start like uh, on my computer it's very slow to open this window so it used to be fast but i don't know why maybe it's a bug maybe a graphic card stuff so i'll leave it on but to start this it's preview so you click here you wait for uh, photo view 360 for modo to start and i usually make it very small so if i do anything here you see it render fast. Uh, and when I don't use it, I pause it. Sometimes if I want to see a really high detail, I would go full resolution preview. And if you want to send an image to a client, you could save it, save the preview as a JPEG or a P 
PNG. If you save it as a PNG, your shadow will be on a layer. Um, this, the speed of this, as you know, it's your CPU, your, uh, your Intel. Uh, but this is only a preview. Keep this in mind that uh, if we need the ink or things to glow, uh, you'll have to go final render here. So when I usually start photo view, I would go first in option and set my option right. So let's click here. This is the size of your final image, so 4,000 is pretty big. I would go a little bit lower, maybe 15 by uh, something, by 12. Unless you're going to go into DPI and print it. The default JPEG for now is fine. Now the big mistake that uh, Dasso left is this. The preview and the final are the same, so it doesn't make much sense. So your preview should be good, so it's fast, and your final should be best. Sometime with complex glass or metal, you could use maximum, but that will take a long time. So I usually set up to best. 1.6 of gamma is perfect, do not touch that one. Bloom, it's if you have material that shine, like LED light. And contour rendering, it's if while you render, you trace. And here I'm using it, but I don't always use it. So I'll go OK. And now if we go uh, final render, it'll do a much better quality than what you see on the back. And as you can tell, it's Moto. They actually even share the... I think I had a render photo of this. So, as you can tell, uh, here, uh, sorry for the noise, um, here is um, a pretty high-res uh, image. This is 100%, 50%. We can save the image here as a PNG or JPEG or TIFF. This is the final. We can uh, uh, make bloom, we can make things um, uh, shine. Uh, space bar is the way you can hide and hide things. Voila. So what I'll do, I'll start from scratch. So I'll close this and we'll open a new, uh, I'll close here and we'll open the ROV without any texture. Uh, this one, the one that I started with. So we start like this with uh, basically uh, an assembly or uh, just a few parts. The first thing I would do, uh, like I was showing, option, uh, the frame size, that's not a huge deal, but this is a big deal good and best. If you're not using uh, contour, turn it off. I sometimes use it, but not that often. And the first thing I would do, we can uh, have modo light and camera, but if you're going to go this way, you might as well use modo. Uh, I, it's not that simple to use. So, and modo can work also, uh, you know, with the animation in, in, uh, in, um, Solid work in, in solid works, but if I have to do this, I would just go and use Modo. So to do stills to fake a camera, the first thing I do, I click here, and I enable perspective. So now I can see perspective line. You see, it's not more orth orthographic; it has a perspective. If you want to change the lens uh, way of speaking, you can go view modify. Uh, where is it? Perspective. And here, if you go one, it'll be a fisheye, and if you go five, six, it'll be a telephoto. I usually leave it at three. I think it's pretty good. The second thing that I would do is um, when you move, the floor uh, is uh, upside down. Uh, you see it tilt. So yes, what I'm explaining with uh, this function is that um, by default SOLIDWORKS it's off. Uh, if I select the top plane, you can see that it tilt. Uh, the plane is not flat. And it's a good thing for modeling, but not rendering. So whenever I render, I check this on. And uh, if I'm not rendering, it's off. And now it's flat, as you can tell. So second thing, I'll bring uh, an environment lighting. Um, and I'll go like this by double clicking so you can see the the key light the rim light and the backlight 
and uh, here I can go edit scenes to uh, tweak this if you need to uh, in the render you can actually see very well what's going on uh, once again this could be used as a backdrop but it's mostly on environment lighting and high dynamic range or IBL image based lighting um, so uh, if you tweak it by going edit scenes you could change the floor height here if your modeling was wrong you could add floor reflection but you could also ask to have a gradient instead so the lighting is still the same in the reflection but now we have just a background so if I wanted those highlights to be on the back or on the side uh, you would go advance and rotation and you would go maybe every 30 and you see now the lighting change so this is totally up to you um, by default I would leave it at zero uh, and I would leave this one at environment but it could be changed so this was step one uh, get the mimicking the camera by doing this and then double clicking on this one on the scene basic scene and this one and then we we're starting to get a lighting and some shadow things like this now what's next is the texturing so the way we can do this we can do on the appearances that means material and we have a lot we have a pretty large uh, modo uh, library so if let's say i was going to plastics I could ch uh, choose, let's say, a high gloss, who is not very pretty usually, because it reflects a lot, and drag and drop it to an object. And when you let go, be careful. This pop-up, uh, the most common is the part, where you would get the whole part, but here, my part is all of the solid. So here I would go body. But most of the time, the body would be a part. But you could also go into uh, your feature, if you had an extrude or cut, or a face if you just wanted that face to be blue so here I'll go body but usually would use part so you click on it and now as you can tell the blue is here if we need to tweak the blue uh, that will happen uh, if let's say I don't want uh, something that shiny or I don't like the blue you go here so you click here uh, this is the decal this is the lighting and the texture is here and you right click I could remove it but you could also, also go edit and here you see this is where I will change the blue so I could click here and change the blue to something else and you could see the update but you could also go advance and here we could go on the surface finishing illumination and the reflection is here so the lower the less reflective I think here you have to press OK to see it uh, so if I go like really low 0.01 uh, I think if you press OK then it would reflect the change and it's working because O1 of reflection is already quite a bit uh, so I could go back here illumination and we could make it transparent if we wanted so something very transparent Oh, and I just realized the why it's still very white, it's because the specular is also the reflection is very high. So 0.1 here. That's the real reflection here. You see it's gone. So you don't have to close the window. And if we wanted, yeah, we could make it transparent. Say OK, and now it's see-through. OK? To get rid of it, the best. You could drag and drop a new uh, material. Now, if I wanted something with low gloss, you might as well get it from here. Uh, it's all made, and you drag and drop again into it. Make sure you select the part of the body, and now you have a low gloss. If you need it on the other side, you would go like this and drop it here. Yeah? So it's pretty simple. Sometime in a few minutes, uh, we get pretty good render. Um, so we have all of the high gloss, low gloss. There's the texture plastic that are quite nice. So those one, they actually have uh, a texture into them. So I'll drag and drop maybe here. And now if we zoom into it, we'll see the texture. You see that uh, noisy? Well, actually the blue has it too. So same thing here, edit. 
and here we could uh, so change the color here and uh, the mapping is usually under basic it's kind of confusing but and here you could say how many uh, you want do you want it wide so here you'll get big blobby thing usually I would go very small so I get a lot of tiny detail even more than here okay but the logic is the same so here I think uh, will be better with a clear plastic so I'll use this one and just replace it voila so now we can actually see through and we can see the blue reflecting plus the environment um, there's a lot of good material here uh, there's the composite uh, this is very tricky to do it's a carbon fiber so just for fun I'll show you uh, I'll drag it here into body so now because carbon fiber has two highlight there's the highlight of the fabric and the highlight of the epoxy so here if we want more tiling more repeat you'll have to go edit mapping and you see we could go lower here so now it'll be much more realistic uh, meaning that from far away you won't see it's uh, carbon fiber but if you come really close you'll see all of the fiber and we can keep on going so models got very good uh, mesh if you wanted to see through to give a texture has very good wax so subsurface scattering uh, wax is like a wine milk uh, wax so it lets the light penetrate the surface this is hard to render but it's uh, very good Modo has also very good car paint so uh, paint with metallic fleck i'm trying to think where we could put this here maybe here and now it might be hard to see the reflection here but now that pen has metallic flake on it uh, so uh, the rubber is also excellent there's different type of glass uh, but uh, usually students really like the metals in um, so we could go brushed aluminium to maybe here and now this will be brushed aluminium we could do this on the other side and uh, voila now if at one point you would like to have a decal or a logo or something uh, it's basically drag and drop so we could go here so there's way more huh, by the way uh, there's the light the LED the that's why you have to turn bloom on the option to get it to work uh, but there's the fabric but you could replace by your own clothing there's all of the organic the wood they are so so I usually do wood from scratch but you know you could try them uh, so there's end grain and face grain uh, and there's the water there's the sky liquid uh, those, those, those ones use a subsurface scattering there's stone for architecture uh, there's a lot of things and for a decal, you would actually go here. So you drag and drop it. Modo will load the, the PNG or the JPEG. As you can tell, it's uh, a bit messy. And here I'm just waiting for the render. You would maybe pause the render. And then we could tweak it like this. You could hold control to be a... Uh, and uh, there's a scale, if I can find it. It's usually on the edge here so we could scale it and move it voila. still a bit too big and put it where we want it so if you go reset it would show up here you could also change the image here. so some of those decal they actually have mask uh, like PNG or alpha channel like this one the R, uh, I think usually, or the solid work transparent. Let's try that one. So if I was to bring this one here, so if you double click on it, you should see the handle. Uh, you should be able to uh, rotate it, scale it and move it around. And the non-mask area shows up. Uh, if you move the mouse, it would render where the mouse is moving first. 
Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, I'm going to go in pause, is uh, like I was saying, I would recommend Modo for animation. But if you already know uh, animation in, um, in SolidWorks, uh, let me show you some tricks. So the motion study here, you could do a, a turntable by clicking on the camera, there's a wizard. You could also do um, an exploded view, you could do uh, quite a few things. Next. So for a turntable, it's just everything okay, okay. So now if you play it, you'll see the, the turntable. And uh, you could render this in photo view if you want. Uh, you don't need photo view open. You just go here, save animation, and here. You could just do an AVI, but you could also do save modo render, and uh, you could do an AVI or, a, or an MP4. I would recommend MP4 actually. And maybe a little bit smaller because this is pretty big. Maybe 1280 by 720. And it will take a while uh, unless you do a little bit of it. And uh, yeah, so you can actually make a final movie uh, with, uh, with photo view inside SolidWorks. So the kind of uh, render that you can get out of a photo view model it's things like this. So I did this one in class. Uh, it was like a five minute. The only thing that I added was depth of field. So you see it's a little bit out of focus. But this is the default uh, wood in Modo, uh, the brushed aluminum. And I forgot what this was. Uh, this is some render that I found online. This was done in photo view with a, a background. Uh, this is the bloom, the glow. So your uh, material becomes a light. And this is from a student of mine. Um, and this is something I also found online, just to show you some uh, example.